This is Dr. Philip Ratzlowski, and today we will be discussing Shoko reconstruction with 3D printed implants. Today, in Sharko surgery, there are some exciting developments, particularly with regard to severe deformities that could not be fixed previously. We have the ability to scan in the foot or ankle in its deformed position and create a 3D model of the foot and from that be able to create a 3D printed implant that will correct the deformity of the foot with regard to Charcot surgery and many other surgeries. Today I wanted to share with you a patient that has had Charcot neuroarthropathy with a severe equinus dislocation of the subtalar joint, which was over 30 degrees of correction. Typically, this patient would have needed to be in an external fixator to gradually correct and fix these deformities. What we were able to do is take CT scans and have the 3D reconstruct and print out the deformity parameters and analysis and be able to create a specialized implant. This type of deformity led to a plantar ulcer, which is an ulcer on the bottom of the foot, where every step that the patient was taking, he was causing a pressure wound, thereby causing this, this ulcer to worsen. This is debilitating in many reasons. The wound will not heal as well. The wound can become infected and lead to limb loss. <clears throat> Ultimately, with all diabetic feet, we are attempting to create a limb salvage situation where we can save the limb. There is a company that is called Forweb, and they have the ability to create custom printed implants that will allow for perfect correction based on measurements that are taken. This is really important because you want to take all the guessing out of these surgeries and be able to limit the patient's time on the operating room table and allow them to heal better. Here we'll see, this is part of the computer program, where we take the deformity and then we open it up and put the heel bone back in the right position. Then the people at 4Web will create the proper implant. Here you can see the implant in its place and the green bar would be a screw that we would be inserting into that area to hold it in place. The beauty of this as well is they give you a few different sizes so that when you're in the operating room, in case there is any issues, you can be able to pick from a few sizes so you're not stuck with just one piece. Sometimes life doesn't give you exactly what you are looking for in the operating room. Here are some sizers that also come with the surgery. The patient that is being discussed here had a severely contracted Achilles tendon with the dislocation of the calcaneus. This is a approach going into the posterior ankle. You have a severely contracted posterior ankle capsule as well that is dissected with careful resection of the posterior tibial artery and nerve. Once we are able to assess the subtalar joint, I use a ultrasonic blade to cut through and limit any injury to any tissues. Then we complete the cut through the subtalar joint. Once that cut is completed, then we will slowly be able to distract out in the operating room to correct the deformity. So this deformity is now getting distracted out to put the calcaneus in the right position. What we're looking for is to create about a 20 degree to 24 degree calcaneal inclination angle and that we dialed in with our 
preoperative planning of the correct size of the implant. Here you can see the implant getting sized in place. We're also going to be taking some bone harvest using a amazing bone harvester device called the Avitus Bone Harvester that we can get bone and bone marrow from the patient's proximal tibia. Now you're seeing that we're applying that bone and bone marrow into the foreweb implant. And you'll see here a close-up of the packed bone and bone marrow in the implant. This is the patient's own live cells as opposed to shoving in some dead bone in there and hoping that it will take. Now you'll see here the implant in the right position with a realigned calcaneal inclination angle and the foot in a proper position. This is quite an amazing feat that can only be performed now with these new implants that are available. Here you can see again, this is the implant prior to it going in filled with the marrow. And then you will see as well the foot from the posterior approach. You can see the screw going through the implant that is crossing from the calcaneus through the implant, the foreweb, into the subtalar joint. Here it is prior to closure. Our graft in place. Also here is the placement of the screw that will help it prevent from shifting. It's very stable in a very well fixed position. You can see we double check everything using radiography, the fluoroscopy machine. And this is to make sure that our screw is not going too far out. You do not want it exiting from the front of the ankle. Here's your final pictures with the screw holding it in the right place. Skin takes about three weeks to heal. Lots of swelling, you have to make sure to use drains. A vac pervena is recommended over the incision. Patient heals up over time and can walk and we are able to save this patient's foot. Thank you, this is Dr. Phil Brzezlowski.